Ray Dalio says you must own gold. And here is why. I'm going to explain this to you in three simple, fast steps. Step number one, we've got to understand how the Fed sets the Fed funds rate. Prior to 2009, this was actually very easy. So let me go over the players. The Federal Reserve, all of the primary banks and banks under the Fed's umbrella, we'll call them A, B, and C. All these banks have accounts with the Fed. That's where they keep their reserves and excess reserves. The Fed funds rate is just the interest rate that the banks pay overnight to lend and borrow from one another. We call this the interbank lending. So the more money that these banks have, the lower the Fed funds rate or the interbank lending rate will be. It's simple supply and demand. If the Fed wants the Fed funds rate at 5% instead of, let's say, 10%, all they do is print money out of nowhere. That definitely hasn't changed. They go into the bond market to buy short-term treasuries, T-bills. Well, who is selling them those T-bills? Most likely, that would be Bank A, B, and C. So the Fed takes those T-bills and puts them onto their balance sheet. Whoa, time out. I want to make sure that we totally understand the Fed's balance sheet. When I say that it prints all this money to buy treasury bills, those treasury bills go onto the asset side of the Fed's balance sheet. But all of that funny money that they print, that is a matching liability. So why is the money that they print a liability? because it's an IOU. So the Fed takes those T-bills and puts them onto their balance sheet, but this provides extra money that didn't exist before to the entities that are selling those T-bills. They take that money and put it into their account with the Federal Reserve. That increases the amount of reserves in the system enough to take the rate from 10% to 5%. Again, supply and demand. The more reserves in the system, the more supply we have, therefore the lower the interest rate goes. Post-2009, everything changed. And it all starts with quantitative easing. The first big difference was the Fed went from printing three little dollar bill signs to printing countless dollar bill signs. In fact, They've now printed so many dollar bill signs that they're literally raining down on them from the sky. They did this in order to buy longer term treasuries. So with all that funny money that they printed, they bought those longer term treasuries from the bond market that increased the size of their balance sheet and it increased the amount of liabilities that they owe. Remember, those are those IOUs. The primary dealers and banks under the Fed's umbrella that sold all of those long-term treasuries that the Fed bought from quantitative easing took that money and put it into their reserve accounts. The Fed printed so much money that that took the reserve accounts to a level where the interest rate or the Fed funds rate couldn't go above zero. There's no way to do it. So if the Fed wanted the Fed funds rate to reach 1%, they had to figure out a new way to do that. The system that they came up with was IOR, interest on reserves. So the Fed went to all the banks and said, listen guys, okay, I understand that there's so much liquidity, there's so much cash in reserves that the natural rate of interest is 0%, but we wanted it one. So here's what we'll do. We'll pay you guys 1% on your reserves and your excess reserves. So the banks look at that and say, hmm, okay, yeah, we'll do that, no problem. So the banks have no motivation to lend at a rate higher than 1% because they can get that 1% risk-free just by parking the reserves at the Fed. This effectively sets a floor to the Fed funds rate. There is a problem. 
There are a lot of banks and lending institutions outside of the Fed's umbrella. They're kind of like the redheaded stepchild banks and they don't have accounts with the Fed. So they can't get interest on their reserves. If the natural rate of lending is 0% because of all the funny money the Fed has printed to do quantitative easing, that's a big delta between 0 and 1%. So these banks outside of the system come to the borrower and say, listen, we'll lend to you for 0.5% because it's a hell of a lot better than getting 0%, which would be their alternative. This potentially lowers the rate for all of the money markets, bringing down the Fed funds rate under their target. So the Fed has to think of a solution for this. So they come up with the reverse repo. Basically, that's IOR for all of these banks outside of the system. The Fed says to these banks, listen guys, we will borrow your excess reserves and pay you the same rate that we're paying all the cool kid banks under the umbrella, IOR. The banks outside of the system say, yes, that is a great deal because that is risk free money, that's a no brainer. So this is how it works today. There's another thing that you need to understand to tie all of this together at the end of the video. That's the discount window. This is the Fed saying to all the banks inside and outside of the system, listen, if you get into trouble and no other entities will lend to you in the open market, you can come to the discount window, give us collateral, and we will give you however much money you need. The rate will be a little bit higher than the Fed funds rate, but that way the Fed is the lender of last resort. Sounds like a good plan, but this comes back to bite them in the end. Now that we understand all this, let's go to Ray Dalio himself in this CNBC interview talking about why you must own gold. Step number two, I'm going to give my reaction to everything Ray says about gold. And then we're going to go right back to the whiteboard and I'm going to put all the pieces of the puzzle together for you. And hopefully I can do this while biting my tongue when these clueless CNBC announcers interject and try to interrupt Ray show on, on Friday and suggested right now that you have to be in the market full on. And so the question is whether everybody jumps on the train, everybody gets in full on, and then the problem arises. That I you're think talking that's about. likely. But then the, but but then the question then is, when do, you, when do you jump off the train? But, the, but the, also the question is, what do you jump into when right. you jump off the train? And the issue is you, you can't jump into cash. Cash is trash. Okay? <laughs> cash is that trash. they're going to because they're going to print money we could own, mm. what do you do you get out okay right. so cash is not going to so what do you do i think that you have to have a certain amount of gold in your portfolio mm -hmm. right? or you have to have something that's hard there are three monetary yeah, systems exactly. that happen the first is in, in the old days it had intrinsic value you'd carry around gold coins then they and then we come up with the idea of banks or even central banks and what they do is they create certificates, right. we call notes, that are claims on those things. Mm -hmm. And we put many more certificates than there is money in the bank. And then that's a linked system. Right. And we so we did that and we broke that in 1971. Then you have a, mon um, a, a fiat monetary mm -hmm. system, which means that you can print whatever amount of money you want. And you can put that, and that's what governments do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's so awesome to hear someone like Ray Dalio with an extremely high profile talk and think about gold the exact same way that we do. If we're tinfoil hatters, so is Ray Dalio. Who's going to do the buying? Central bankers and mm -hmm. others. What are they going to hold as yep. reserves? What has been tried and true? Are they going to hold digital Bitcoin? They're going to hold gold. They're that is a reserve currency and it's been a reserve currency for a thousand years um i don't want to i know this is going to be the headline of gold i want to emphasize a, a bit of gold is a diversifier okay and that's the advice i can give i know i'm going to come out of here like ray Daly's wild on gold 
And that's not exactly. I'm not saying cash is trash is your headline. But (laughs) you would have thought that after all the years of zero interest Uh, rates and QE one, two, three, and four, here we go. You could have been making this case that entire time of what of what you were just making. Maybe there was so, so much of a lack of demand in the private sector following the financial crisis that it was able to absorb all of that. But coming to us now with that, it almost. At the risk of sounding like the boy who cried wolf too many times, I'm not saying you did, but we all were. The, the death of the bond vigil, vigilante, vigilante. We, we, it's been well documented for the past ten years. Now you. Okay, and this clown brings up the exact reason why the talking heads in the media and most people, for that matter, get gold completely wrong. They look at it as though it's a speculative asset. They compare it to stocks or they compare it to Bitcoin. They compare it to something where you're buying it because you think the price is going to go up. That is not why you buy gold. Gold is an insurance policy, period. If the price goes up, that's fantastic. But the main reason you buy it is to maintain your purchasing power. It's not comparable to stocks, the S&P or the NASDAQ. What you're saying is oh, the no, time to I work. Think I think it's totally different. Well, I would say when we are dealing with the negative interest rates, which we've had for years and years already. Well, just well, let them talk. We know how long it's been. Okay, and you take each country, and you take where we were in December toward the tightening, then you create an easy. We are now coming in a, to a direction. And so the question for any of us is not whether it's early or not, The question for any of us is when you're holding all of those bonds and you have a negative interest rate Mm -hmm. or something, and how far more can you push that? What does the next five years look like? And the next five years is going to be something like that, plus there'll be more deficits. Now, more deficits means sell more bonds. Who are you going to sell the bonds? Why should Mm -hmm. I believe we're going to negative interest rates in the United States? (sighs) Well, I I think that, and I'm not saying now. I'm saying that, okay, if you, if you have a next next downturn, okay, mm-hmm. what is, it's on average 500 basis points of, of rate cuts. Oh, then you can't do that. You go to okay. QE, right? right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Mo- and we're having our stimulant, right. Right. we don't have much stimulant. We have people at each other's throats over the wealth gap. And so what will the next downturn be? And also, why would you want to hold those? Mm-hmm. Why do you want to hold those at some point? I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm not, I've been wrong plenty in my life, so I can't, I could be wrong. I'm just trying to describe, like, tell me why that makes sense. Of course, great points by Ray Dalio, and those guys keep interrupting him. It's it's so annoying. I don't see how anyone watches this stuff. But regardless, what Ray's saying is that he sees negative interest rates coming. He sees a lot of money printing because they're going to have to take it to the zero bound, meaning the Fed funds rate. And in order to combat a recession in the past, they've had to decrease interest rates by at least 5%. So how do you do that if right now positive interest rates are only 1.5%? So once you get to that lower bound, or or once you get to 0% interest rates, you still have 3.5% to go. So Ray's saying that that's going to be made up in additional money printing. And if the government is running trillion dollar deficits, interest rates are negative, you have all this money printing, who is going to be your buyer for those bonds and for that debt? And you combine this, that what the Fed is doing will lead to more and more social unrest because it's only benefiting the top 1% that own assets and you've got a powder keg. Ray makes some great points that show why you must own gold in 2020. But I want to take it a step further with negative interest rates and money printing and touch on some things that Ray didn't have the opportunity to address in this CNBC interview. So let's go right back to the whiteboard. Step number three. So in the video, we know Ray Dalio says you must own gold because of negative interest rates and money printing. Let's explore that further. Before the great financial crisis, the Fed funds rate was at 5%. They had to drop it down to 0%. In order to do that, they had to expand the balance sheet 
to $4.5 trillion. That's what created enough liquidity to push those rates down to 0% and keep them there regardless of what the Fed's target was. That's why they came out with IOR, interest on reserves, what we covered in step number one. Fast forward to September 17th, 2019. At that time, the Fed Fund's top target rate was 2.25%. IOR was 2.1%. The repo market blew up to 10%, and that took the Fed Fund's rate above its target. In other words, the Fed lost control of that rate. It took it up to 2.25%. Three percent. While this was happening in the background, the Fed had started QT, quantitative tightening. In other words, they were reducing the size of their balance sheet and reducing the amount of reserves in the system. They thought there were so many reserves that this wasn't a big deal. They dropped it down to 3.7 trillion and all of a sudden this happened. That means there wasn't enough reserves in the system. Since that time, they've had to add $100 billion a month to their balance sheet, which I'd like to point out is more than they're adding during quantitative easing three, which was 85 billion. They've taken the balance sheet back up to 4.2 trillion to get the rate down to 1.5. So what we can conclude from all of these numbers, in order to get the interest rate, the Fed funds rate down to zero, the Fed would have to add at least another 1.3 trillion to their balance sheet or BS if you will. And that math is based on the fact that after the great financial crisis, it took them 900 billion of balance sheet expansion to lower the rate by just 1%. So that's where we're getting the additional 1.35 trillion in balance sheet expansion. It took all of this money printing to get the rates down to zero. You can imagine how much additional money printing would be required to get them into negative territory and keep them there. This is Ray Dalio's implicit point, but I'd like to expand on that. Just because the Fed drops IOR into negative territory, as September 17th shows us, that doesn't necessarily mean that the Fed funds rate is there. So they can dream about negative interest rates all they want, but it doesn't mean that the market is going to play their game. And there's one more thing. Remember the discount window that we talked about in step number one. That is supposed to be the Fed's ceiling for the market. So any of these banks or entities inside the system or outside the system can go to that discount window and borrow at a rate just slightly higher than the Fed funds target rate. The problem with that is if any entity goes and uses the discount window, the market will know that they are bust because they can't borrow from anywhere else. That's the kiss of death and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So effectively, the Fed doesn't have a discount window. It doesn't even exist because no one will use it. That means they don't have a ceiling for the interest rates other than additional money printing. And that is why you need to own gold in 2020. For more content that'll help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control central banks and big governments, check out this playlist right here, and I will see you on the next video.